Hey y'all, I have had this cheap Harbor Freight press for a couple of years now. I actually got it secondhand from a buddy and he had already put the casters on it. I added the air cylinder, but it's still just a cheap Harbor Freight press. It's got terrible welds. I cannot really afford a nice press. And so I'm gonna put in the work to not just make this thing tougher, but make it a multi-tool. A lot of work to get this done, but uh, it lets me weld and fabricate and I love to do that. So that, that is this little project. So I'm gonna try this uh, where the welds are just, they're just terrible. Pinholes all the way through. You can even see this crack right here. There's no penetration from the weld on the other side. So in addition to doing a reinforcement right here, I'm gonna make sure that, uh, that these welds get redone. It's gonna be hard to pull the paint off of those. So we're gonna try this thing out. This is a chemical stripper and I'm gonna try it out in these little corners. flat surfaces, the stripper, it lifts the paint pretty well, but in the corners, uh, you really just need a wire brush. Now say what you will about the Harbor Freight welds and assembly. Look, I, I've said plenty, but their paint is tougher than woodpecker lips. There's four of them and they fit here inside and they nest actually uh, up and inside a little bit of these C channels. And then these guys, uh, the big ones fit on either side. And then this one right here goes to the, uh, uh, goes, where is it? Ah, goes to the brace that's over here at the actual lower part. So around about the time this video comes out, these dimple dies, you know, kind of maybe shortly after, something like that, they're going to be available here pretty soon here in the early part of 2024. Uh, that's, that's what I'm told. So I'm only barely ahead of what's available to y'all. The nice thing is you don't have to buy every single piece of tooling because dimple dies are kind of expensive, especially when you buy sets of them. Uh, looks race car and it adds a little bit of, uh, of additional strength. This, these things also fit like a glove right out of the box. I'll probably use a mixture of MIG and TIG on this. The TIG will be nice if I can just go back over some of these nasty welds and get them you know, melted and profiled or whatever. But probably gonna be like some nasty, nasty spatter. So when all the material is clean, it's a joy to TIG weld. When it's dirty, it's awful. So probably gonna put on like the old style swirly gas collet and I'm gonna weld with a small gas lens because what I think will happen is some of these impurities in here, if I just TIG weld right over them, they'll pop and crackle and get back on the tungsten and ruin my gas lens. They're like 10 bucks a pop and I can just avoid that by using the, the cheaper stuff on these particular projects. Really, all I'm doing is closing in an open C-shape to increase the beam strength. It's like boxing in a frame on a truck where an enclosed shape just has more stiffness uh, than an open one. And of course, you can, look, you can do all of this at home without the dimples and just simply cut the plates out of whatever you have. It, it doesn't even really have to be heavy stuff either. This is just 12 gauge mild steel. Projects like this, they are just a great opportunity to practice welding and fabrication skills before putting them into practice on the car or truck. At least that's my opinion. That's why you see me doing a lot of TIG welding on like something that probably should be MIG welded throughout. Now a little detail, you'll notice I'm spacing out my welds. That serves a few purposes. Fewer welds take less time and consumables, sure, but it also means less heat input to the work, which but that helps keep everything from bending into a taco shell. So, you know, that's helpful. Also, if one weld cracks from stress because of the gap between them, that crack won't immediately propagate across the plate. So that's, there's some level of irony to having them dimple die. The upgrades to the tool that you only use to dimple die. Dude, it's absolutely perfect. Because <laughs> that's pretty much all you use this thing for. Look, and, and Dave's right, up to now, 
I've really only used this press to form flared holes and look, those days of limited use are about at an end. We are, we are making this a multi-tool. Presets on the Multimatic are pretty solid, but I tend to back off slightly on the wire speed or at least give it a few more volts. That tends to reduce spatter and is great for joint profiles that usually need a bit more heat. Again, you don't have to get a bunch of slick plates from Simcuts in, certainly I like it, but I have got one more thing to make this press a whole lot tougher, and you might already have the parts for it. for just a second. They're gonna work really, really well and they're gonna reinforce this open C shape very, very well and make it good and tough. But even if you don't do all that, there's still something that you can do for your press at home using just, maybe just some scrap parts out of your, out of your bin. In fact, that's what I did here, is I pulled some square tube out of my bin and made a little topper. A brace like this, regardless of whether you've got the plates or not, is just a great idea, right? As this begins to push up, all these forces will get transferred and you will have to break or bend the angles in these triangles for them to not hold this thing together. I'm not saying this makes it impervious, you know, you can break anything, but just some regular square tube scrap is a great way to strengthen this thing up. You don't have to go and order a bunch of stuff from Send Cut Send, even though it does make it cool in race car and does make it good and, and strong. I got this straight out of my scrap pile. You'll see in just another minute, but. Man, I'm not leaving this material to just rust. It'll be cleaned up and, and painted. Now, remember, you could stop here and make this a very fantastic press, like put it all back together. Maybe add the air cylinder like I've run for a good long time or, you know, the casters like I've got on here. Fantastic piece of gear. But remember, I wanted to make this a multi-tool, so we're gonna add some capability. I can already, you know, use this as a press. I already do a bunch of dimple dies, but I need to be able to bend metal too. And it turns out Swag Off-Road has a kit for that. There's a lot of good information already on YouTube about how to put this together. I am going to go step by step uh, using all the tools that I have here. Just be aware that there's two different versions of the kit where Swag will pre-assemble it for you. You can just pop right it in the press. Or if you're a weld nerd like me, you can build it here at home.
that y'all know I am a big fan of TIG welding. And to me, like whether you do a combo or whatever, that's totally up to you. But I'll tell you, even for my machine, which has an air-cooled torch, it'll take forever to TIG weld this whole thing because I'll just run up to the limits of the torch. It, you can do 200 amps, but only in short spurts. MIG just outburns the TIG in this particular case. So even where I've welded it and, and I need to start filling in and adding material, the MIG is perfect for that. Did a little bit of both here, but you know, I'm not necessarily married to one or the other. Use what works when it works. like y'all I could not wait to bend something so I grabbed a leftover piece of chromoly plate and just let the tool eat. This will actually uh, bend over 90 and you can stack uh, different pieces of angle iron in there to get uh, different radii. That's how that's gonna work. I could not be any happier with that. This is gonna be so cool. Uh, sometimes I, I don't wanna have to spec out something and go to the sheet metal shop or order it online, whatever it is, and now I have that capacity here, in addition to doing all the dimples. And you can see from the video is you can bend over 90 and I'll, I'll stack up more plates in there to get the different angles that I want. You know, don't confuse this with a real deal legit bender, right? That's not a real bottom die. It is, you know, structural steel and, and angle iron. That's that's by every definition pretty soft in terms of steel. And if you had a real bottom die, that'd be made out of tool steel and that'd be super hard. So this is not like a production tool, but it's perfect for us regular folk working in our garage, making things on our own, where we only need to bend a few things and we're not hitting it with three eighths over and over and over again. Anyway, all I'm saying is, I think that this is an exceptional value. But right now what I gotta do is I gotta throw a coat of paint on this thing uh, because it's actually gonna get used and I want it to look nice. Uh, for the folks that know me know that I'll make things all the time and not paint them. And that's just a bad idea. I should paint more things. In this case, I had a very specific paint I wanted to use. It's gonna look really nice. <laughs> something is useful and functional, powerful, and still looks good. And man, does that ever look nice. First, thank you to Seymour Paints and Sincutsin for providing uh, all the materials for this. Uh, you can look at the link in my bio, find a 15% off coupon or discount code for Sincutsin, and of course use the link to Seymour to get free shipping. That MRO, that is a high solids paint. It's really, really slick, very high coverage, so you don't need a bunch of coats on it. But beware, man, you gotta shake the ever loving snot out of it. It's got a lot of stuff in there. Uh, Swag Off Road, look, I think they make good gear, but just so you guys know, I bought that stuff with my own money, uh, so this is not a commercial for them. I think that's just a good piece of equipment. I don't care if there's a statute of limitations on saying good 2020 40 y'all. Uh, happy you're here and until next time take good care okay.